up in Zion. So glad that you all can join us um, as we patiently wait for others to join in. We thank God for um, this evening. Praise God. We thank God for keeping us all day long. Praise the Lord. And so again, we welcome you all to Iron Sharpens Iron. Um, our mission is we come together collectively weekly every Tuesday, 7 p.m. We start at 7.05 p.m. sharp. We try to allow a, a couple extra minutes for everyone to get on and get settled. But we do start at 7.05 sharp. Um, we come together for Bible study as well as fellowship. And we come together to get to know each other and build a personal, genuine relationship with one another. Because only then can we truly come to love one another when we get to know each other on a personal, uh, personal level. So thank God for, again, for each and everyone that we have had the opportunity to build with. Um, this ministry has been going on now for, I want to say it's been about four to five years, about four years. So um, we're just grateful that um, my husband was obedient when God called him to this ministry. And again, we're thankful for everyone that has fellowship with us and has um, built with us in this time. Uh, one scripture I'd like to share with you is 1 John 3, 23. And this is his command. It is to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. Praise God. So um, just wanted to leave you with that. And, and I like that scripture, how he says here, to love one another. I love that. Um, just one moment. Okay. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go ahead. I guess I'll start with prayer. And then after that, we'll be in the hands of uh, my husband, who will be leading us in this Bible study on tonight. Praise God. So, Father God, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for all the brothers and sisters that are present um, on our Zoom call, as well as those that listen via uh via YouTube. And I'm just praying that Father on tonight, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts, Lord, and speak to our minds, Lord, and that you will fill us with your word, Father God, that you will give us the answers that we're seeking, Father, that you will give us the direction that we're looking, excuse me, that we're looking for on tonight. Father God, I pray that um, someone will be encouraged on tonight. Someone will be lifted up. I pray that someone will have the mind to seek you even more after tonight, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for each and every family member that's represented here on tonight, Father. And I just pray, I want to say, Lord, please forgive us, Lord, for our sins and blot out our transgressions, Lord. Father God, we ask for forgiveness uh, for anyone that we may have offended, Lord. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, in those areas where we failed and we fell short. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, along our journey, Lord, that, Lord, we will, um, we will learn. We will learn from our imperfections, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you and we just say, have your way on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Have your way, have your way. Amen. Glad everybody can join us. How you guys doing out there? Amen. Good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. I see you, Brother <laughs> I see you, Sister Lindy, Sister Jessica. How you guys doing out there? Hallelujah. Brother Charles with you? Amen. No, it's just me. Hello, everybody. Hey, Miss hey, Lindsay and everybody. How everybody's doing? All right, Brother. Hello, everybody. Doing good. How are you, Lemuel? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. Just trying to stay warm out there in this cold. It's gonna be a cold winter, I can tell. It's starting mm -hmm. off. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we um commune today in our word, we're gonna be looking at some things that are, are very um very powerful. I mean, you know, you got man telling us one thing. But you got the spirit of the Lord telling us another. As we look in our scripture, a brief synopsis, let us see that the kingdom is being handed over 
to a different nation. We're going to see what do you have to take part in so you can become a part of the world to come. A lot of people just know this world. I did to it first till the Holy Ghost fell on me and showed me something different. Hallelujah. I was praising the Lord, minding my business in jail like Joseph. And the Holy Ghost fell upon me and showed me something different. Hallelujah. As we dick on our word, let us see how can we be a part of the world that's to come. A lot of people think it's running around here, beating foot in the world and doing all of these things of the world, gaining all of these things of the world. But like an eagle that's going to get up and fly away towards heaven. And only what you do for Christ, alas. Hallelujah. Let us look at this word right here. Let's start at Matthew 16 at 13 through 17. Let us get in our footing. Let us see how powerful it is to know Jesus because the power that he is going to put on the inside of us is going to get us kingdom ready. Hallelujah. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea at Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I am the son of man. So Jesus just let him know right there who he is. He said, who do men say that, who do men say that I am the son of man? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and other Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but who do ye say that I am? Remember, Christ is going to be sent by the Father, not to everybody. So who do you say that Jesus is? It ain't about what the crowd say or about what other people say who have not received their measure yet. Although they're going to come up to you telling you and acting like they know God, but you have to know God for yourself. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That was awesome. Ooh, I, the whole time you're talking, I'm saying, ooh, mm, that was tasty. Mm. Okay. Amen, brother. T. Good stuff. <laughs> now that's valuable right there because remember, we got to do what the Father says do, and that's to get to know His Son Jesus, whom He sent us. Not only to bridge the gap to bring us to Him, but to inherit eternal salvation. So if we're listening to other people's doctrine or other people's, you know what they're doing, and that's not lining up with the Scripture of the Father and Jesus then you could be led astray. This is very important. John 1 at 12 has gave he power to become the children of God. You can know much scripture. That don't mean anything. The letter killeth. But it's the spirit that brings you in line with the Father's will and Jesus' will so you can gain eternal salvation and go to the life that is after this. Amen. Let us turn our attention to John 18, down at 10. This was when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and Judas and the Roman centurions and the Pharisees came to apprehend Jesus. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest servants and cut off his ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up the sword into the sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Remember, we have to pick up our cross and we have to drink of that cup. Jesus wants to fight our battles in the spiritual realm, not in the carnal. When he put Malchus' ear back on him, and turned to his servant, Peter, and told him, that ain't the way we fight. I got a work to do here for my father who was in heaven. 
This is the way we fight. Hallelujah. Allow the power of Jesus. Allow yourself to get to know Jesus through the scripture. Let him fight your battle in the spiritual realm. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to pick up our cup. We got to drink up that cup. We got to pick up our cross. We might get hurt in different ways. People might embarrass you. People might try to put you down. Christ Jesus' name, saints. But we got a duty to let our fruit remain. So men, may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Anybody want to speak on that? Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to get around to it. We just getting started. Hallelujah. So what we just showed is you got to get to know Jesus and also you got to fight the way Jesus wants us to fight. Ephesians 6, 10 through 16. The fight is not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. There's geographical demonic territories all around us in the spiritual realm. You have to allow yourself to come to the word of God. God will fight those battles in the spiritual realm, which will manifest themselves to the natural. You will defeat them obstacles with Jesus. And if we go through some obstacles, it's because God is intending to work, a uh, work within us. We'll get into Galatians 5.22, which brings us into the kingdom of God later. All the obstacles, you ain't going to be defeated for you. Some obstacles you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to allow the fruits of the spirit to work in your character. Long suffering, Meekness, gentleness. Jesus is intending to get you ready so you can inherit the kingdom. Amen. As we look at John 5 and 22, for the father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the son, that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honored not the Son, honor not the Father, which sent him. We got to understand this scripture, saints. The Father is judging nobody. He's given all authority over to his Son. A lot of people running around, not calling Jesus by his name because they're scared to be persecuted. They're running around doing all of this other stuff and disrespecting whom the Father has sent us. And he is the way through the door. The father ain't judging nobody. You ain't going to bypass the son and think you're going to the father, Allah, whatever name you want to say. Our judgment has been committed to his son. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the scripture talking. This ain't me. This is the scripture talking. See, we got to get to know how to get in this word and allow Jesus to put this word together for us so we can understand our way. It ain't in the houses, the cars, the things of this life that life give you. Jesus said, you can't love the father if you love this world. All the lusts of the eyes, the cars, the houses, all of this stuff here is only pleasing to the flesh, which have enmity with the spirit. That's why a lot of people can't get to study now because of the stuff in this world. And don't you know if you bring yourself to the world, you can save yourself and your household? But we're too busy allowing the plans and the schemes of this world to keep us from our ultimate goal of why we were sent here. That's a distraction. I quit watching football a long time ago. The Lord showed me it was a distraction. I, I ain't saying if you do, you do. You go ahead. You know how to 
put things in its proper perspective. All of this stuff is a distraction. There's a spiritual war going on and you being distracted by somebody kicking around a ball. Yeah. Just, just. John 1, 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God is going to give you power so you can be born again. In that power, that's what we need to grow in Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the spirit. Jesus right here on the board is telling these high priests of Israel, don't you know the kingdom is going to be taken from you? It's going to be given to a people that's going to be bringing forth fruits thereof. That's important now. And the reason why this is important is because if you fight the right way in Christ Jesus, you can inherit eternal salvation the right way. But if no man that God has sent has given you the proper correct word, then you're going to be wandering off entertaining Satan's world. Matthew 21, 42 through 46. Jesus said unto them, we tweeted it. Did you never read in the scriptures? Jesus said. Jesus said unto them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. He's talking about himself. The builders rejected him. And he, the one that they rejected, has become the head of the corner. Remember, Jesus didn't come to heal the people that was healed already, but to come to heal them that were lost and broken. So the poor sit in the shoes with Jesus. The people here that's rejecting the poor, don't you know they've become the head of the corner? The next life that you're going to go into is going to be all the people you look down on. All the people you put down on, they're going to become head of the corner because they followed Jesus and they broke in this. Jesus came and found them. When I was in jail and pulled the covers over my head, thought my life was gone, came and found me. When you come to the end of yourself, he's going to come and find you. Amen. Let me quit talking. <laughs> Well, when uh, the announcement of Jesus' birth was to the shepherds, so that was all in every people. And uh, that is what Jesus is about, saving the poor. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what he came for. That's what he came for. Any, anybody else want to look at that? This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes, Jesus says. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. Not getting a job in life and having everybody run around serving you. Jesus said the son of man came to serve, not to be served. Are you putting yourself in a servant's shoes when you go amongst the world? Or are you want everybody to serve you? Which let people know if you have the spirit of Christ in you because the spirit of Christ Come to serve. So if you are partaking in that spirit, you should be serving all day long. I don't care how much of a chief status you have of the world. The chiefest among you shall be a servant. Therefore say I unto you, read it again. 
the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Talking to the Nicene Council, the high priest, Caiaphas and Annas, the leaders of Israel. The kingdom of God is going to be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power. So understand, if you have your encounter with Jesus, it's not just about having your encounter with Jesus, but you got to stay connected to the vine and bring about fruits within your character. This is what pleases the Father and Jesus. And you can read that at John 15. Read the whole chapter about staying connected to the vine, which is Jesus. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen, Brother Dwayne. How you doing? God bless you, sir. Thank you, Brother. God bless you, too, man. All is well, you heard me. Trying to get some of this food in me, you heard me? Man. I need, some, I need, I need something, you heard me? I need this to go out back, go back out into the world. I love you. You know what I'm saying? I hear you talking. I ain't got much to say. I'm eating tonight. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Remember, it's important. People honking at us, people cutting us off. Allow that patience, allow that gentleness, allow that long suffering when God is sending you to people and they're putting you down or they're not answering for you, but you continue to stay sending scriptures out to them, stay calling them, stay reaching for them, long suffering with them. One day it might be that call where they accept. It took you 500 times, but guess what? They accept you. And I understand this takes a strong individual to do. Some people don't have the patience for that. That's why God's given us, you know, our measure, because he know what we can handle and what we can't handle. That's agape love. It's not predicated on whether you pick up the phone or not. You didn't enlist me. Jesus did. And he waited on me when I was no good. When I was hurting people, he made it on me. How much more should I wait on somebody else? Hey, also, I want to add to that. Also, too, like, you know, if you're just coming out of the world, it doesn't matter how far you are in the world. If you are still here today, there still is a purpose for you. You know, so, it, it, and it takes, it's going to be a lifetime of correction. Then. Once you get, once you cross over, it's a lifetime. It's not something that happens overnight. But you have to constantly put the work in. Amen. You have to put the work in. Don't, don't feel pressure like, man, he talking about me. Don't feel Amen. Like that. It's all right. The Bible didn't hit everybody that read it. Everybody, everybody that knows about the Bible, close me. Woo, he talking about me. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's good. Cool. The race is not for the swift. As long as you keep putting your foot forward, no matter what happens, just First repeat, God. move on. Ask God, show me how to go through this. I need your guidance. Look, this is my mm -hmm. prayer. I, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. If I do it, First I know what it's going to look like. But with you, God, everything. It's possible. The Holy Spirit know how to pray for you before you know how to pray for you. Mm -hmm. So don't 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 beat yourself up about it. Just keep moving, keep on in the fight. Need some Amen. Reach out to a brother or sister. Get on your knees. Ask God. Give me somebody. Show me somebody. Praise, Praise God. Praise the Lord. I like that, um, Brother Dwayne. That was real good. And what stood out to me, I was listening to what you were saying. And the part that I really liked what you said is it's going to take us doing some work. We have to be um, intentional. So we have to put in, in the work. We can't we can't be lazy. We can't be lazy about our salvation. We can't be lazy about our world. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the word and the Lord is there. But there is work that we have to do because the change is not going to just fall out the sky. So we can't be lazy about our growth. There's things that we have to do. We have to put in the work and we have to be intentional about making sure that we're growing, that we're developing, that we're maturing, that we're, um, you know, we're growing in the areas that we're weak in. 
that's our responsibility. Whatever we have to do, each one of us know where we need to grow at. And it's our responsibility to take self-evaluation on where we need to grow. And whatever work we have to put in to make that uh, growth possible, that's something that we need to do. And I like that because you're that's that just hit me. We have you have to do the work. We have to do the work. And the work I may have to do um in some certain areas of my life may not be the work you have to do in that area. You may be stronger than me in that area. Everybody has their own areas where they need to, and everybody should know what that is, right? But what I need to work hard on and what I'm um what do I want to say a little maybe even Amen. a little slower maybe a little slower in other areas than someone else. Everyone has those weak areas. All of us do. But I think that just to keep, we can't, just because we know we're weak in an area, we can't just keep saying, well, that's just my weak area. You know, I'm weak in that. No, at some point, those are the areas we're supposed to be building that muscle up in. Right. That's the area. When you go to the gym, you know, you go into the gym, you're trying to work out those trouble areas. If you're already toned in your calves, you don't need to spend much time on your calves, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but so you're going to spend time on the areas that you're weak in. So that's the Amen. same with our spiritual walk. What's the point of keep stressing on and working on the points? You know that you're strong. You got that muscle. But all these other five, six areas, you go to the gym, you don't even work on that. You know, they're flabby. It's, it's, it's not right. It ain't tight. And those are the areas that when you go to the gym, but because because those are the the, maybe the, what I want to say, the most challenging areas, like for me, working on my abs. Shoot, that's pain. Shoot, that's a little pain <laughs> I got to endure when I want to build that up. That's kind of painful, and it takes a lot out of me to do that. So the areas that where we have to put more work in and it may be a little bit more painful for us, we you know we can't ignore those areas. Mm. <laughs> no word, no word. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Very good word. This brings me back right now to the Garden of Gethsemane again when the high priest and the Roman guards went in to apprehend Jesus. Peter instantly went to violence. Now, just like my wife was saying, you know, a lot of us, when we go through things, we go to violence. But that's mm -hmm. not the way to fight with Jesus. See, when you get to know Jesus, he allows you to understand how you're going to govern yourself and how you're going to fight from this point on. Our fight is not with flesh and blood. When we're picking up our cross and we're drinking up that cup. We're doing it the way the one who enlisted us, we're going to run the race according Amen. to the way the one who enlisted us wants us yeah. to run. Amen. Now, the race ain't given to the swift, like the brother said earlier, but those that endure to the end. So we have to pace ourselves. We're going to go up against things with families, kids, with jobs, with co-workers, with all kind of stuff going against us. But we got to be strong and know who we know in the spirit. We know Christ. Just like Jesus asked his apostle, who do men say I am? Who do you say I am? Everybody the father didn't send Jesus to. That's why they're mixed up in their theology. That's why they think that Jesus is the father. You have to have an encounter with Jesus to know who he is. If you knew me, he said, you should have known my father also because he's the one who sends him to you. Amen. That's important. Because that is right there is going to start the work within you in the spirit to bring you to Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And they that are, have Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So we got areas that we have to work in. All of us are not exempt. Just because I'm struggling in areas and God has chosen me, that don't mean that I'm going to stop the gospel from coming through me and going forth. Even if I don't make it, just using it as an analogy. I want to see you make it. That's how much of the love he put in me. 
I shouldn't even be right here experiencing what I'm experiencing now. <laughs> but he has allowed me to experience it. So I want to let his word go through me, even though I'm broken. Even though he's still doing the work to fix me. And that's how we all should be. Because he who started a good work, guess what? He's going to bring that work to fruition. So I ain't even worried. He's going to fix it. He's going to allow the strength to fix it. It might not be in your timing, but it's going to be in his timing. Jesus will fix it. Yes, he will. Jesus will fix it. Hallelujah. 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 So I um sorry about that. Go ahead, sorry about that. I'm I'm sorry. I you know, just kind of listening to everybody and and talking about all of this, it just started bringing to my um mind and my heart that um how we're supposed to fight our battles. Mm. I love that song that this is how I fight my battles right. down on our knees, praying, but also the reason we need, one of the reasons we need to know scripture is because the other way we fight evil, the other way we fight Satan is to give him scripture. Mm. Speak scripture back to him. He doesn't like that. Mm. And and that's our authority over him, right? So... Uh, yeah, so it's important, you're right, to know how we need to fight our battles. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. The word is, is I believe it's, the word says the word is our weapon. Yeah. So the the sword, or is it the sword, the sword? Yeah. Yes, it is. Amen. It yeah. sure is. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's the word. So yeah, you're right, Sister Lindy. We gotta that's why we have to, you're right, give know that word. And when a circumstance or a situation come up, instead of speaking to the carnal thing or the or person or the situation, we gotta go to that spiritual realm and fight it with the word. Because it's the yeah. spirit, especially if it's an individual. It's it's not the individual per se, but it's the spirit within the individual. Yeah, so we bypass exactly. the individual. We don't direct anything at them. We don't curse them no. out. But if you get that word of God and you speak to that demon inside mm -hmm. of them, ooh, because it says mm -hmm. them demons tremble at, the, yeah, at, at Jesus' name. And, and just to call on the name of Jesus and throw those words out there, the, that demon can't take it. Amen. That's right. Yeah. 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 I think Amen. sometimes we, we tend to forget that. Um, yes. And I think You're we right. just have to keep having that reminder, you know, that this is this is how I fight my battles. I mean, I don't know how better to say it right. than That's just true. how I fight my battles. Yeah. Um, just to have that reminder that that's what we need to do. You're so right, Sister Michelle. And Thank I think you. what happens is we get when certain situations and circumstances come up, what happens is we get so caught up in the flesh because see, then when we get caught yeah. up in our emotions and when we get caught up in our emotions, then we're getting caught up in the flesh and we become, yeah, we're, we're, we're reacting and our response comes from the carnal. And yes, we right. do. We have to be intentional about reminding ourselves, reminding yeah. ourselves, like you said, this is how we fight our battles. But another part to that, uh, I was talking to a sister today and her and I was uh, fellowshipping and um, I like what she said. And it always, it just rings to me in my spirit. And that is, um, be ready so you don't have to get ready. See, when we're yes. walking up right and we're fasting and we're filling ourselves every day and every and weekly with the Lord, when circumstances come up like that, our default will automatically be in the spirit. But if you're far exactly. away from the spirit because you haven't been on your knees, you haven't been filling yourself up, you haven't been um, consecrating, then yes, yeah, sometimes we're a little delayed in our thinking. And what happens is when something comes up, our flesh will be the first instinct as opposed to our spirit right, being right, the first right, instinct. Right, right. And see, the thing is, the more we put in us, and that's why we have to, this, we have to 
Now get ready, but stay ready. This should be a, 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 a daily thing with us. We don't, you know, we should be praying and talking to, to the Lord throughout the day. Not just one time, you know, when we get ready for bed and we say our prayer, but throughout the day, constantly, you know, throughout mm -hmm. the day, even if we say, Lord, thank you, you know, praising him throughout the day, but we're staying connected. And like I said, um, staying prayerful, reading our word, filling ourselves up. And when you do that, you're staying ready, you know, taking meditation time, not only to pray, but allow God to speak back to you get in a quiet place away from everything shut everything down and let god speak to you let the holy spirit speak to you because the holy spirit will begin to witness to your soul and witness to you and and that's filling ourselves up and so when things come up in the world and circumstances again you know what we're gonna default and that's our goal we want our default to be our spirit and not our flesh. But if you're not filling yeah. yourself up and you're just doing worldly things all week long, your default is going to be your flesh. You're going to have to give more thought. Like you said, Sister Lindy, you'll probably have to give more thought. It's mm -hmm. going to be a delayed reaction because you've been operating mm -hmm. in the flesh all week long. So in the spirit yeah. ain't just going to come like, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. the thing is we have to, we, we, yeah, we have to stay ready. Yes. Yeah. That's a really excellent way to put it, Sister Michelle, is to, to uh, get ready, but be ready. Yeah. How did you say that again? Don't get ready. Be ready. No, we got to stay ready. ready. Be ready. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There you go. I like that too. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we see. And I like, well, both of you, Ms. Lindsay, Ms. Lindsay said, and Michelle uh, about tremble. You know, God's words is tremble. You know, When you speak God word, you 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 tremble. You Amen. know, it's, it's yeah. wrong. You know, powerful it is. You do every does. I, I had that experience. You know, <laughs> some evil thought came to me, and then all of a sudden, God word came up, and I start trembling. You know, right. Uh, you know. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Right. Now remember, those spirits they know they can't dwell in the house where Jesus is in. Jesus gave us too much scripture to know that. Them demons want to ask permission to go in the water. And he put them in the pig, then ran them in the water. Now, understand this. With the sons of silver, when they try to cast out the demons in the name of Paul's God, the spirit said, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. But who are you? The spirit knows who you is. You hear me? Your wicked spirits know if you got Jesus in your life or not. Trust me. Amen. Let us finish right here. So just for the people that logged on, I think lead late to understand the kingdom of God is being handed over to a new nation. But um, the requirement is that that new nation bring forth fruits thereof. So Galatians 5.22 the fruits of the spirit is the gift that is going to get you in the kingdom of God. It ain't nothing here in this world, <clears throat> but to bring forth the fruits of the spirit. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard this parable, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Now the multitude ain't gonna let them jump on Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is ringing true on everything he said and do. The high priest and them were scared to death to do anything to Jesus. They feared the multitude and they took him for a prophet. Hallelujah. So understanding, right here at Ephesians, right here at Ephesians at 6, 10 through 16, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now we know from Job 1 and 6, the devil been plotting. The sons of God came to present themselves unto the Lord. And when they got there, Satan was amongst them. He already got kicked out. 
by Michael and the angels. And a third of his angels already got kicked out. They've been down here plotting how they're going to deceive the sons of God. That's plural. Men and women. So we have to be careful. We have to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, That's against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This world is dark. You hear me? It's spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand within this evil day. And having done all to do, stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. We have to fight the way Jesus wants us to fight. If persecution come, know that the Lord is allowing to put us in a situation where we can build the spirit he puts in us. Remember, this world and the spirit he puts in us have enmity between each other. So if he put his spirit on the inside of you and the world is coming at you persecuting, guess what? It's only intending to work the spirit in you. Temperance, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness. Amen. And any opportunity that come up, let it have its course. That's another opportunity for you to grow in that area. Amen. 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 Anybody got anything else they want to say? I was just going to say I couldn't get off mute um, fast enough, but I just wanted to, to agree with you. Not only is this world dark, it's getting darker every day. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that gives us more, should give us more encouragement about uh, being ready, like Sister mm -hmm. Michelle said. Um, right. Yeah, making making sure that we have on the full armor of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last scripture, John 15, three to six. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself and separate the vine in the vine. That fruit, remember, like we read here, is going to ultimately get you to the kingdom of God. You got to let the fruit work. You can know scripture, you can run around and preach, you can run around and do all this other stuff you want to do, but it's the fruits that are going to allow you to inherit the world to come. Amen. And we only do that by abiding in Christ and going out and letting the world persecute us. Remember, the spirit in you has to work. The only way it works is something coming at it, right? We can't go hide out in the church house and try to escape persecution. It's the persecution that works the spirit within you. You want to get busy? <laughs> Jesus put that ear back on Malchus, remember? And told Peter to put up his war back into a sheep. <laughs> you got to drink of that cup. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vines. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is calf forth as a branch. And is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now remember, like Jesus was praying at the Garden of Gethsemane, can't no man snatch you out his hand. But guess what? According to this scripture I just read, you can take yourself out of his hand. Stay connected to the vine. If not, you're going to be withered away, and men gather and gather them up and they're all burned is what it said. Hallelujah. Anybody got any last words? Thankful for this beautiful word tonight. This was awesome. Remember, it's the fruits of the spirit that is going to put you in position 
to gain eternal salvation. After we receive of the power of Christ, we have to go on and allow that to work within us. Therefore, right here in the middle of Matthew 21 on the board, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Remember, he's talking to the Nicene Council, Caiaphas and Annas and them, and the high priest. It's going to be taken away from Israel and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof. It's going to be given to a nation that bring forth fruits thereof. That fruits is the fruits of the spirit. Hallelujah. Anybody? Romans 10, 9. We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus on the third day that I shall be saved. Then go and get baptized after you make that confession. Jesus said at John 3 and 5, man cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and spirit. Next week, we're going to do communion. We're going to just, man, praise the Lord, reverence the Lord of him coming down here on earth and, and allowing, you know, us to know our way back to him and also leaving, you know, putting us in position where we can receive of the Holy Ghost. That's what that work is about, of, of him shedding his body for us to give us a piece of him. But we're going to do communion. He said, do this often in remembrance of him. So let us be ready next Tuesday at 7 to do communion. Go ahead, Brother Lemuel. Pray us out, Brother. God bless you, sir. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, we come today. Thank you for letting us be here today. We thank you for going to the cross for us and forgiving our sin. Father, we just ask you to just the words we had tonight in the study, that you bring a spirit to us. Father, we all I'm also we also ask you that uh, the world is in darkness. Bring light to this world, Father. Bring joy and bring hope. Father, we thank you for everyone here tonight who participated in the Zoom study. We thank you for Derek and everyone here who gave their opinion. And uh, Father, I just want to praise you and thank you for everything you have done for us in this world. Be with us and guide us and protect us, Father. You keen and keen and Lord is Lord, Father. Father, be with those who are ill, Father, if thou will, Father, nurse them back to help, Father. Be with those who just have problems, just problems of the world. Be with them and send them to those programs uh, to, to, that can help them in their situation, Father. We thank you for this day, and I praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless Amen. You. you guys have a good, wonderful rest of the evening and rest of the week. Amen. Thank you. You, you too. Same, family. All right, dear. Amen, Amen Brother Lemiel. Way to, way to carefully choose those words in the name of God. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right, see. Um, yes. We miss, miss you, Saturday. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, I missed Saturday, and I was going to kind of bail out of it just, just to get with my family, fellow brethren, but... That's all right, bro. Drop off. Okay. All right. God bless you. All right. God, God bless you. God bless you. What a study. Remember, we got to grow in the fruit. That's what yes. Bring us to the kingdom. Absolutely. Absolutely. What they told you, what you heard, but we just seen Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm smiling by. I'm smiling because I'm 
I, I I'm I'm doing so, but I am doing a daily report on how to do more so. So let's go. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, for picking for picking all of us. But amen. yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you all you guys. Take care. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah.